on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the uh, Black Art and Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Terry, uh, here with the uh, Mahogany Gallery. And today I'm excited to have uh, another phenomenal artist here, Mr. Thomas E. Lockhart. Uh, Thomas Lockhart is out of uh, Colorado. I'm excited to have him here uh, today with us. So we're going to talk to Thomas about his career, uh, his journey as an artist, and some things he likes to do. Uh, and some goals, and, and just get to know who, who Thomas uh, Lockhart is. So welcome, Thomas, how you doing? Yes, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Blessed and highly favored, I guess. That's one of the things we can say. Right on, right on, right on. You have been very busy, very busy, and very prolific and very active artist. So, you know, I'm really excited to have you with us uh, today and uh, really share in your journey as an artist and also talk about some of the work that you do and also one of the things that's really unique, I think, with, with, with your work is that you're you're very uh, you're, you're a very multidisciplinary artist. So you, yeah. you work as you work with a lot of mediums, and um, you know it shows uh, through your work. So we're going to jump right into uh, this interview with you today. So tell us who who is Thomas Lockhart? Who is that? Yes, uh, Thomas Lockhart is a uh, mixed media artist. Um, I'm a self-taught artist. I did go to college for graphic design uh, years ago. Um, always loved art, had a passion for it, and it really grew back in the early 2000s. So for about a good 22 years, I've been really pushing on uh, working with my art and uh, a little over five years full-time, you know, in, in this uh art game, uh, just learning and growing as I go and um, just bringing all the, the tidbits and everything that I learn and in culture and been doing a lot of research um, and, and engulfing that into my work to really give my pieces more than just a, a pretty face to it, but that it has a, a story to tell um, uh, with, with the images too as well. And so uh, just very thankful for uh, the, the responses that I've been getting. Um, and I've been <laughs> moving all over the country this year, um, just going going after it, you know, as an artist. And hopefully to be able to inspire other people, not just with the art, but with uh, the, the, the strive of, of moving forward and, and making a name for myself and also um, to be an inspiration for other people to, to move forward with their gifts and their crafts, whatever they may be, yeah. Inspiring people through your work and, and your own journey, that's one of your your goals, you would say. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, sure. so, so talk about how did you get up to this point? I mean, have you always been a, uh, been intentional about being a practicing visual artist or did you have another career before you uh, jumped on that road? Or talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, as I had mentioned before, I went to college for graphic design and really tried to pursue that. And uh, I just ran into a lot of roadblocks at the at that time, back in 95, 96. And uh, everybody wanted, uh, they, they wanted experience. You know, you had two to five years experience of this and that. And what I really envisioned that I was gonna be working with a company like with a firm, with other people, creatives, put together ads and all this other type of stuff. And that just never did pan out that way. So I ended up doing a lot of freelance work myself and a lot of the different odd jobs and stuff that I took over the years, um, all the way from sign companies to uh, uh, selling signs from door to door uh, and designing stuff right on the spot to uh, selling fire extinguishers <laughs> and uh, to, to working for Loomis, you know, and in my last big job, I was a correctional officer for about uh, eight and a half years before I was like, God, I felt God said it was time for me to go and yeah. really pursue this. But I had been painting and doing my artwork for all that time and having some representation and uh, just really wanting to pursue it, you know, on a full-term basis. So back in... Um, 2017 is when I, I took that leap. Yeah, put together kind of like a plan, you know, and then from that plan, I've been trying to work that plan and, you know, make it grow bigger as, as time has gone on. Absolutely. So, you know, in my experience, that's that typically tends to be a, a common theme in terms of artists who are, you know, they start somewhere else. They start doing, they start doing something different. Whether it's you know in the same sort of category, on umbrella like design, or something 
entirely different. And then, but they've had this uh, burning desire or passion uh, with art that they finally said, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a leap of faith and I'm going to jump into this 100%. So looking back, it's probably said to say that was a good decision on your part to, to jump in 100%. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Right on. So, what, so what would you say to other artists, other people who are in the same situation that you were in, in terms of, of uh, they may be on the fence, you know, not maybe don't have believe in themselves or their ability. And what would you say to those artists who are who really want to take that next step? I would say um, entrepreneurship is something that's built into us, and you have to pursue some form or fashion of it because you're, you're going to feel incomplete if you do, if you don't do it. Because working for someone else is great, you know, because it is like one of those things where you get, I can count on this check coming at the end of the week, supposedly, or I can count on this this type of uh, these benefits and stuff that are coming at the end of the month to take care of my family. But always having something, what they say, what you do after your nine to five, from your five to nine will determine what you're experiencing your life goals and places that you're going to be in the future people that you hang around with is very important are you in the room with people that think just like you are you in the room with people who are they have more knowledge and more understanding that you do so you could say the the people that you're hanging out with now in five years that's where you're going to be so if you're the smartest person in the room and you're happy being that way you're going to be the smartest person in the room five years from now so it's important that you continue to grow and expand and read and and just get a mentor too as well a mentor is a very good especially somebody in this this uh this line of work um because they can tell you some about the pitfalls and it's like I'm, I'm i'm learning from some of the other people who've been in the game for a while uh what they've been through and then of course with technology and social media and all these other different things we're having a big up jump from what they had to go through you know the internet and, and uh, the web is has put a, a dent in some of the gallery aspects but the galleries i believe are, are still coming up and still starting to thrive again because people like to go out and see work yeah, you can see it online, but being able to get close to it and touch it and feel the texture of it and, and get to see it visually more, it, it, it's still something that you can't get rid of. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, being able to write down some goals and say, this is the things that I want to do. And I believe thoughts are things. Thoughts, you put your thoughts, they move into actions. You push forward with it. Even when you have obstacles, you can always realign your goals and to, to move through those things and just keep going. Don't have, don't give up because some things come really hard for some people. Some things come easy for other people. But, you know, if you put a, a purpose and a plan behind those things, you can make a lot of those things come to fruition. And they may not always come the way that you want them. Um, sometimes things take time, you know, and it's got to be a, a part about patience um and aligned with you know your goals and strategic focusing on a couple of things or one thing in particular not like a whole bunch of things where i used to be i'd be all over the place working on so much stuff and you're not you're not able to get one thing done because you're trying to do so much in many other things so yeah indeed so absolutely. Okay. You touched on a lot of things in, it, in this um, in that response. Uh, I'm going to uh, take it back a little bit. Um, you talked about um, two things that I feel are important. Um, well, a lot of things are important, but what I want to speak on is the mentorship. Uh, so touch on what has that awareness of you understanding that having a mentor would be helpful to you. Now, what 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 was there a catalyst to to help you realize that and how has that uh, mentoring helped you? I believe uh, the mentoring has been uh, a big help in certain ways because you, you're learning about um, the industry, you know, different things that you can expect, different places to go, different realignments and adjustments that you need to do um, when you're preparing for shows, when you're preparing to present your work in front of people, you know, because one of the say, you know, a lasting impression a lot of it comes from the first time that they get a chance to see you being able to uh 
so uh, there are a lot of artists that are introverts right that, and they they don't like to be around people but i believe that people buy your work because they they, they like you right they get to see you and they get to spend time with you and kind of understand where your mind is at and so it's important to try to get out of that you know being in a cave of all I want to do is art and let somebody else take care of that stuff. You got to get out there and, and talk to people because we're not only high tech, but we're also high, t high touch. And uh, if you want your art to be able to speak and talk to people, they got to know where it came from and what your thought process was and not to be afraid of, you know, um, uh, just being in seclusion because they're, they're artists that way. But then there are also other artists that do that way. But in the mentorship, you know, just learning how to make sure you're, you're on time. That's a big thing. Um, I always like to be before time because you never know what things come into uh, different aspects and stuff in your journey of where you're headed to. If you're gonna do a show, if you're gonna be online for um, a talk with someone, it's always good to make sure you, you, you prompt. You know, you want to be very reliable. Things that you, you learn from your mentors. You say you're going to do something. That whole, um, uh, you know, the handshake that used to go so far back in the day. You know, it doesn't mean a lot as much as it used to back in the day. But I always still try to take that with me. That if I give you a handshake, I'm going to do my best to do what I said that I'm going to do for you. Um, and if I can't, I'm going to try to give you enough time to let you know that, you know, it's not possible for me to complete this or can we rework some time or, or something in that, that particular manner. So it's, it's important that if you give your word that you do your best to uh, follow through on that. And if you have to make some readjustments, you know, let folks know that you're, uh, you're going to do your best to do that too as well. Indeed, indeed. So talk about your, you mentioned your circles of influence. So like the people you hang with, uh, uh -huh. associate with, how has that changed? for you over the years? You know, I think uh, my circle of influence has also uh, dealt with experiences. I always said I, I always wanted to learn by example and not by experience. But I tell you, the uh, in, in life, it, you, you go through experience as much as you want. You can plan, plan, plan all you want. But life will say, uh, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> and you got to jump on the bandwagon and kind of improvise. That's one of the things with art too, as well, Imp improvision and being able to to adjust to changing times too, as well. And with uh, the mentorship, um, uh, hopefully I don't get off off topic for what you were saying. It's it's it's, it's, it's important to um, just look for guides um, that can help help you through your uh, your process and the things that you do. And, and like I said, I say looking to people who have done what you're trying to do is extremely important instead of just trying to go out flat footed and, and try to figure the road out what yeah. is going to be best for you in your process. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, you know, one of the things I really advocate for artists is that to, to, to art, black artists, specifically, or artists in general, but specifically black artists, is to know or get familiar to get familiar with you know this the, the lexicon of black artists historically and mm -hmm. you know if you really look go back to history you will see that there's a very long and diverse uh history in terms of uh styles uh mediums uh men and women who have done this work before us and oftentimes i think we, we forget about that you know yeah um for whatever reason but it's always good to get back to um get back to our roots to help us in our future decisions as a as a practicing artist because some of these artists were a lot of these artists previously to us in our uh, previous generations our ancestors have been way been through way more than what we will encounter or have encountered and um i'm a big fan of doing that research to help us make decisions for um, the future. So we talk about um, black art history. Are there any artists who, from, that you resonate with their work or their personalities or their, you know, styles, any kind of any artists from our from previous generations that, uh, that you would connect with? Um, 
shoot, uh, previous generations, uh, there are a, a, a number of artists that I, I I really like a lot. And it's not just black artists too as well. It's been some other artists that run the gambit. Like I, I really love uh, El Salvador Dali. Um, uh, his work and his passion and his stuff and I didn't know if I was going to kind of get into some more of that surrealism and I, I still may you know in times playing around with uh, different things um, uh, George Hunt if you're familiar with George Hunt oh, yeah, yeah. His work yeah I love I loved his work I love being able to talk to him too when he was alive a couple times that I get I did get a chance to meet him because I learned some techniques from him that have helped me to this day that you know, I, I can get and share with other people. Um, I got recently to spend some time with another one of my favorite artists, um, Paul Goodnight. Oh, sure. And you know, Paul just being this juggernaut in in the black art industry, and even in just in his uh, his space, you know, was uh, pretty amazing. You know, and then learning about people like Romar Bearden, uh, learning about Elizabeth Catlett, you know, learning about Jacob Lawrence learning about um, uh, Bibbs and, and um, uh, Charles White and, and uh, some of these Aaron Douglas and right. some of these, you know, Richmond Barthay and, and the, 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 the connections and stuff that they've gone through. And some of these other black artists that were even out of the country that just names I just can't pop off right now and seeing what, what they had to go through, you know, because like I said, it's at this time it's, I'm standing on the the shoulders of giants to be able to see further off in the distance than they could you know and i believe that at least i pray that people will be able to stand on my shoulders be able to see further than i yeah and yeah absolutely and and they, and they will i mean you're, yeah. you're, you're creating a legacy you know you're definitely creating a legacy uh yeah. thomas so talk about a little bit about um so the business side of yeah of art, right? You have a different experience than, you know, other artists. So, you know, talk about that. You know, is, is there a connection between the two? And if so, you know, what what is what is the takeaway from um, the business side of art from an artist perspective? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of these things that I'm, I'm still working on. So it's like work, <laughs> having, having mentors is, is really important because you can kind of see where their pitfalls are. So. In the business side, it's important to take some time out away from your painting to to work on your business, whether it be social media, whether it be your um, your receipts, um, putting and compiling that type of paperwork and, and things together, so you kind of know where you're at financially. You know, um, I found myself last year half of what I made went back into my business. And I was like, oh my goodness, I spent that much money on my business. I was like, I never even made that much money in a year. You know, just what I spent on my business. Right. And I was like, man, that's that's just a blessing to be able to say I did that. It's crazy. Right. But uh, those are one of the things. That's why I'm saying I, I got to get some a little bit more assistance and stuff right now because it's too much stuff going on at once. And it's like, I've done that. And so now it's one of the things that you don't ever want to say, oh, I don't want to do that. I'll leave that to somebody else to do. It's always important to know where your stuff is at. Because if you ever have to go back to it or you need to tell somebody, hey, this is what I need to have done. It's not like, oh, I don't even know what I need to have done. And you can be there to, to guide and direct other people because you've done it yourself. Mm -hmm. Talking on the people, conversating, getting back to your customers. Um, you know, some things that I learned about from, from different shows, you may go to a show, you may not do that great, but you've, co you've collected a lot of names from people. And sometimes they're looking at other art, but they remember something about you and being able to send a, a, a notification or email or um, a newsletter. And they realize that they really like what you had and you make, make, make more sales that direction. Sometimes I'll around the holiday season, I'll just reach out to people through text just to say hi, just to, just to let them know and thank you so much for appreciating me. Thank you for your support. And that's it, you know? And sometimes somebody says, oh, do you still have that one piece or whatever? And I've done that before and 
made quite a few thousands of dollars just by finding out how other people are doing and not just pushing, hey, I'm trying to sell a piece of art, but I'm, I'm literally trying to see how you're doing and just to thank you for your support for helping to get me to this point. Yeah. Those are some of like the soft skills of, of the entrepreneurial side, right? I think often we forget about, you know? It's yeah, yeah. Contact. We talked about that before, about that yeah. uh, basic human need to, to stay connected. Um, yeah. So, well, thanks for sharing that, uh, Thomas. So, to talk a little bit about, you know, what, uh, so what is what inspires you, or who inspires you? What or who inspires you? Oh my goodness, it would be a what and a who. So, uh, people ask, you know, where do I get my inspirations from my art? And um, it was crazy. One of my last pieces came from a conversation. Uh, one of my other artist friends that was I was talking to, and he travels with me um, off and on to a number of shows. And uh, he had just made mention of something. Uh, it was talking about, I don't know if it was a peacock or something or other, but it was just something that just sparked an idea in my head. So I put together this piece called The Hunt, right? And, it, and this is just one of the inspirations. So I put together this piece called The Hunt on the Circle Campus. And the piece has this black man, you know, uh, nice looking young black man. And behind him has these peacock feathers. And the peacock feathers uh, represent that in the, the male and the female peacock, the male ha is the one that has all the colors. He opens up his feathers and he's looking for a mate. And in his skin is embedded these gold bars, which represent, they say, words of hunter, of uh, protector, provider, um, and uh, a couple other different things. And he's saying, this is what I'm, this is what I have to offer to you, whether in this relationship of a friendship or of a mating, courting, something like that. And so that's where that picture came. It all just kind of popped in my head from that conversation. So I'll, I'll listen to music. I'll get uh, different ideas that come that direction. I may uh, see something, you know, things that are going on political. I'm working on a, another political piece right now, currently that draw my attention. And then of course, history. So I like doing research, you know, and especially right now, you know, biblically they say, you know, in the last days that uh, uh, old men will dream dreams and young men will have visions. And we're, we're seeing a lot of things, especially about us in our culture and finding out, man, we've been lied to by so much, so much information out there. And so being able to get all this information sometimes can be overwhelming. And so you got to take things in, in bites and chucks, but when you're able to find out, oh, I didn't know that about, or oh, I didn't know that about, and I can grab this information and then I form a piece from that too as well. So yeah, my inspirations, they, they come from all types of things. And especially when I start doing some research on stuff, trying to get to the, the actual truth, you know, because they say there's a fact and there's truth and then there's all these different aspects that come together to make this, uh, to make something you know, visual, and that could be seen and, and heard through your art. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what is, so what is success, Thomas Lockhart? What does success look like? What, what is that? Oh my goodness, that's that's a great question. So there's this uh, a doctor, he was a uh, um, doctor, uh, Miles Monroe. Uh, he grew up in um, uh, Bahamas, I believe. Very poor, right? And he became this uh, speaker all over the world. He passed, I think, back in 2015, a plane crash, unfortunately. But he wrote like 75 books, um, and he had uh, spoke all over the world. Just an amazing uh, gentleman. And so I've been basing a lot of my success aspects by one of these quotes that he said. He says, if you want to be successful, don't seek to become successful seek to become a person of value and then success will come from there so if you have a value and you have a substance that's something that people are looking for and they're in need of the success will come if you give of your time give of your uh your yourself uh and not being selfish to other people and the things that you are learning then that those successes will come people will come looking and searching for you and asking for the value that you have, the success will come through that. That's 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 what I base basing a lot of my uh, my things around right now. 
Interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, thanks for sharing that. Now, here's another question I'd like to ask artists. Um, do you consider yourself a, a black artist? Or would you consider yourself just an artist in general? I would consider myself an artist that happens to be black. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and with that, because, um, you know, if you've looked at my work over time, it's, it's very diverse. Um, I remember um, when I was, you know, younger into the game, you know, I would have artists that have been around for a while. Hey, you got to paint and people got to know you by what you do here and then you can branch out. But just for me, I've always been different. And I've tried that and it was just hard. It was a struggle to like, I like doing a whole bunch of stuff. But it's like, it is important that your 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 yourself can be seen in the work that you do. So I've always been a very diverse artist too as well. You know, working in pen and ink, working in watercolor, working in oil, working in acrylic, and then collaging and putting mixed media like, you know, I have a fur coat on one of my pieces right now. So it's uh, on, on canvas and then I got jewelry. Uh, and so it's just been important to, you gotta do the things that you love, right? And then people will seek you out. And you know, sometime, it, you know, I look at it, would it took a little bit shorter time to get noticed as I was if I would have just had one type of art and then people just start recognizing, oh, that's his style because right now you'll come in my booth and you'll see 15 different things that will look like yeah. from the same artist. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, man, is this going to be a problem? You know, is galleries going to be interested in me? Because they were like, it ain't going to be interested because the collectors are like, well, I don't know which piece I'm supposed to collect. I was like, well, maybe I'll do this particular style. I'm like, I'll, if you like one of these styles, I'll do this one for you. And then you know, all your collectors and stuff will come, they'll see this and they'll know that's me, but it just never worked for me. So, and, oh, go ahead, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. yeah. And so I was like, I just gotta, I gotta be me. Cause I know I'm different from so many other artists that are out there because I do so many different things, but I feel like it's all me. This is all my style. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, like, like knowing knowing your work i mean for me i i see i see that like even though it could be different different content right and different uh -huh. elements in your work you work with a lot of um other materials yes a single piece and i think that's one thing that makes it your work your style unique even though it may not be typical style per se like you know, yeah you have an approach put it that way yeah the approach i think that's really identifiable to to your work, but I want to backtrack a little bit because you mentioned about um, the collectors, right? Yeah. Um, do you? Uh, you answered it a little bit, but for an artist who may be watching, uh, yes. How do you juggle that? Right? How do you juggle what a collector may want in terms in in comparison to what you want to do? I mean, are you? Is that a struggle for you, or do you? Are you producing work for a collector or are you producing work for you in the hopes mm -hmm. that a collector will recognize that and, and appreciate that? You know, I, I think I used to be in that aspect like, okay, what, what, what do people want? What do people want? And then, you know, you start trying to follow trends and see what other people are doing. You know, I see sometimes I'll see someone passes unfortunately a superstar or something like that and then i'll jump on social media and everybody's drawing that person you know and it's like okay well that's that's great it's a trend but when i'm look, trying to look at is it, like what's the deeper thing if i'm going to do something with someone i need to find out what what made them tick and what's the importance behind their life um or in, in the collection aspect, I am doing a lot of things right now that deal with our history. So as you were saying, a black artist, I'm a, I'm a black man who happens to be an artist, but I'm also a black artist now too as well, a lot more. Because I'm realizing, goodness gracious, we have such a rich history that there's so many things that we just don't know about us. And being to open to understand that, man, everybody follows the culture and we're the culture. And we don't know that. It's like 
hopefully I'm not getting off topic again, but you know, we see things that we buy and we love as a culture. We realize that people follow us around all the time and they dictate to see what we do because us as, 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 as a black culture here in the United States, we spend trillions of dollars a year. So these are the companies, they want that money. Let me find out what they like. And then I'm gonna put it in their face and they'll be like, oh man, I love this. <laughs> and I'm gonna buy it, you know? And then now they just, because they're, 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 they're building everything from, from who we are as a people. And so getting back to the collector aspect is, it's important that you do what makes you happy because I think that is gonna exude and, and people will be able to see that within your work. So if a collector is going to collect something and they see something that they like in you, they're going to collect what you have. So I think that's that's important. So that's sort of getting back to that whole human need, right? Human connection, right? So it's really about it's really about you, really, as the artist and mm -hmm. your personality is showing through your work. You yes. That? That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just looking at your your uh, your bio here. Um, so Thomas is in is in the uh, uh, very impressive list here of uh, collections, uh, private collections. Uh, you know, Tyler Perry Studios, um, Von Miller, Denver Broncos, uh, uh, Don Player, um, Children's Hospital of Colorado, uh, Ms. Shabazz, Malcolm X's daughter. Um, so just talking in general about um, you don't have to get into details, but you know how do, how do those how do these how do these connections happen? How does how do these um, how are you able to get in these collections? Yes, yeah, so some of these collections have been from people that I know who know me, who see my work, and some of them have been you know people that I've met at shows, like uh, Miss uh, Ilyasha Shabazz that I have on there. Um, I now consider a good friend of mine. Um, and she collects my work. You know, she's probably one of the most that I know outspoken daughters of Malcolm. Um, and uh, just a really beautiful and wonderful person uh, to get to know. Um, some of the stuff with Tyler Perry, that was a connection through one uh, of the gentlemen who was on the show, um, The Have and Have Nots. Uh, uh, Judge Harrington, his real name is Peter Peros, and he's been an actor for many years. He, uh, was back on Night Rider back in the day, if you can remember. First, oh, first okay. only black man that was on that show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, yeah you better. <laughs> At least, uh, that's, my, that's my generation. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Night Rider, man. That was an awesome show. And so yeah. through him seeing my work, you know, he commissioned me to do that piece for Tyler and just being able to go up and go through those gates and seeing his land and then getting to meet him and seeing that he loved the work that I did um, was pretty awesome, pretty awesome. He was he was in Martha's Vineyard just recently and um, uh, there was just a slight misconnection because I was trying to get, you know, meet him again because I hadn't had a chance to speak to him since 2019. So, but he was at the function I was at, so. Yeah, sure. But yeah, and many other, other collectors, you know, it's just been through different avenues and other people like I, I did like last year I did like four or five pieces for um, uh, Marquise Pouncey uh, for him and his brother um, the twin brothers they both played in the NFL one was for Miami and, and Marquise played for uh, uh, the Steelers for like 11 years or so and so right. I got to do some really big pieces uh, for them through a connection so that was really cool <laughs> So talk about your mix of, this kind of gets back to the whole entrepreneurial piece, but how, you know, your mix of, you know, shows, which you do a lot of, um, you know, gallery, um, your own uh, efforts to, you know, sell and, and show your work. You know, what what's that mix? Like, or do you, you know, do you believe in that mixture of opportunities that uh, you should pursue as, a, as an artist? Yeah, yeah, and I've I've learned from uh, uh, some other artists like uh, you've heard of Charlie Palmer too as well. And I had some time to be able to spend with him and seeing how how he works right now because he's like he's everywhere. Yeah, right. he's big man, right. big artist. <laughs> right. So seeing the things that he's doing and just being able to ask some questions when I get a chance to it's hard to get in touch with him now. But uh, um, the shows, the internet, and 
you also in galleries too it's important to be able to have a, a a good connection with all those different things too as well because galleries can support your work and they also give you a um, especially to some collectors it, it gives them some comfortability that you got somebody representing you you know just like your gallery and um the people that you represent because you you know the work you know the industry um and you know as you can see kind of what people are looking for you know in in as collectors looking for art or, or new people just coming in to find out how can i start collecting work and who should i start collecting um so that's important to do that it, it's an, it's important to do things on your own too as well as i look at uh to be able to uh, and that's where business comes in when you're doing things with contracts and stuff like that and it's also good to, to run those things past other people as well that you, you love and trust that can help you guide you through those those different aspects and then going to shows um, it's important like I said the, 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 you got the high tech and you got the high touch to be able to be in front of people and so they can see you visually I mean, but there's some artists that have been able to do it, like Banksy. You know, nobody knows what he looks like, but he's a multi-millionaire. So there's some people that can do it without being seen. So I'm not saying you have to do it this way, but it's it doesn't seem to be like a, a big number of people are doing that. You know what I'm saying? Some people have been able to find that particular uh, a niche. And then being on the internet is, is important for people to be able to, to see your work that way too as well. Yeah. And there's several avenues that you can that you can take. Yeah. So it sounds as though like, you know, it's just basically a, a matter of, you know, kind of getting where you fit in, so to speak, right? You know, find your find find your opportunities where they may reside and be open to understand. That may come from anywhere. Yeah. And, and it's not like you want to just like, well, I'm going to throw stuff here. I'm going to throw stuff over there and see what sticks. Um, like I said, the mentorship is, is a big thing because, uh, you know, this day and age, you, you have people that can tell you like, OK, let me help guide you or let me introduce you or let me show you some techniques that may help you. So you're not just trying to run all over the place and do things. Yeah. Oh, and that's a good segue to my next question. We're going to wrap it up. Time flies, man. Time flies, <laughs> man. Right? Um, yeah. Talk about that, um, well, your, your work-life balance as, a, as an entrepreneurial artist. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you, can, you can be stressed thin. You know, <laughs> opportunities and things thrown at you from every angle. So how do you, what do you do personally to manage that life work work life balance yeah i had to just recently i had a um, this uh commission that i was going to be doing and um i had to to really gauge was i going to be able to do it in the midst of everything else that i got going on and i had to i had to back up out of it you know and then try to give them enough uh, opportunity to know that it's um, just not going to be able to do it and it's like i want to do it but um it would be too much stress on myself trying to pursue that and um get everything else that i'm trying to, to get done in a time frame so that's it's always good to let people know kind of like what you are able to handle yeah. and, and and try to make real realistic expectations for yourself no yeah. that's a new thing for you to be able to Turn down something? Yeah, give yourself a <laughs> and tell somebody no. Like, is that new? I know that can be tough for us. You know? it, can, it is always tough as an artist because artists like, man, I'm, you know, you're like, turn down the bag. You know, right. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's not what we do. Right. But I mean, do you want to live? Right. <laughs> yeah. So you can continue to create. So that's one of the things that, that, um, it's important to me that I, I make sure that I can I can do the job and I can do it well. So um, yeah, this year has been a lot of lot of opportunities. I, like I said, I've been all over the place and I still got places to go. Yeah, and I wanted to yeah. jump into that too. So talk about yeah. uh, talk about the the Montrose Vineyard um, experience. Oh my goodness, this year was really amazing. I, I, I was there for like probably like two weeks or so. Um, came uh, with the beginning of uh, being with the uh, Martha Vineyard African American Film Festival and then also doing work with um, Pigment International. 
out of uh, Chicago. And then there's a couple artists that are from Chicago. So we have like this uh, connection there too as well. So with Pigment, um, we did this big photo shoot, which was really cool in different parts of the, uh, on the island. And uh, we created these pieces that were gonna be NFT. So I got my first NFT that was crazy, trying to figure all that stuff out. And did it's you, on, did you get, uh -huh. like, cut off, but did you, yeah. uh, make this clarity, did you make the pieces while you were there or before you went to? But before we did. Okay, so we it. made actual physical pieces gotcha. and then did a digital form of those pieces. And now they're on a site called Rarible that's kind of connected to OpenSea. But uh, it's, yeah, sure. it's a piece on uh, OpenSea under my name, gotcha. uh, a piece that I have as a uh, NFT. So doing that, and then I had a pop-up um, on, there's a street called Circuit Avenue, which has like a lot of black businesses, uh, black galleries uh, uh, that are there in Martha's Vineyard. So I did a pop-up and then um, with the, the film festival, the uh, Martha's Vineyard um, Film Festival, African-American Film Festival and being the featured artist it's the second year before. Last year, they didn't have an artist at all in 19 years that they had. And so it was just a blessing to be able to, you know, it was one of those things, being persistent, meeting people, what can I do, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they liked my work and they got great feedback and I got to come back this year and this year was amazing, better than last year and um, get to go back next year. So I'm very thankful for that too as well. So I remember one day I had three things in one day to do. I was setting up at one show. I had a, a pop up at another show. And in the evening I had uh, another thing with this um a comedy show with the NFT stuff that we had to do. I was like, I don't think I've ever been this busy before, but uh, it was great. It was, it was, it was a blessing. You know, I'm, I'm very honored in, in staying humble and staying grateful for the things that I, I have and understanding where my gifts come from, you know, never getting a big head and always be willing to learn, right you know, be willing to, uh, to adapt if I have to, and uh, to be able to, to share my, experiences and um, opportunities in fact with other other artists yeah so, so um we're getting on the tail end of the interview here so i'm gonna ask you um two more questions one is so what are your what are your the future plans your immediate plans and your your goals moving forward yes um we'll start with uh the stuff that i got going on right now so uh show i got coming up well there's a couple of things. So I just finished a show uh, with the nation called Beauty and Blackness Fine Art Show. That was last weekend. Um, I did yesterday. I was with the Black Boss. Well, no, Saturday I was with the Black Boss Summit. I painted live at one of their dinners here in Colorado. Um, I have uh, work at a place, a Denver Seminary, which is a college. I got a meet and greet with them next Monday. Uh, with some of the students and some of these surrounding churches and stuff that are in that. So they're, uh, I guess, trying to heavily promote that. Uh, I'm in a museum, uh, Kevin Williams, uh, uh, Charlie Palmer, um, Mr. Uh, Gregory Bibbs out of Chicago, and um, uh, Deborah Cedric, uh, Karen, and a, a couple other collective at the Museum of Art. So my first time, you know, really showing in a museum. It's been covered by a couple national magazines and uh, local magazines here, which is, is really getting some good uh, features. People are going to see the work and really getting good feedback on the work. That's, that's on that. Now, where is that? That that's in that's in Fort Collins in Colorado. Collins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Fort Collins. Yeah, yeah. The music museum of art. You could probably see them see it online too as well. It's, it's a really nice show. Then I have um, uh, the culture that show that's coming up uh, in. Um, Right. In, uh, in in Columbus, um, and then a week after that, I'm flying to uh, New York for our opening uh, International Gallery, um, Whitney Amsterdam, Amsterdam Whitney International Gallery in uh, Chelsea, one of the, the top ends where they have a lot of the top end art. So excited about that! I'll be there for the opening of that show, um, and then from there. I think I have something else coming up, and then I'm going to Miami for Art Basel, for Spectrum. Um, uh, last year was a blessing. I won the uh, the director's award for that show. Um, I was like, "Who are you talking about me?" 
<laughs> all these other artists, I'm like, okay, that's pretty sweet. So that was a blessing to to be able to have that. So I'm going this year trying to trying to knock them knock them out the box to get here. But really, I want to sell sell the art. Uh, you don't have to give me an award. And then uh, this year, I got accepted into Who's Who uh, of America as, as one of their top artists. They have like I think about eight to ten. Um, so that was cool. So they have a magazine coming out this, this year called Millennium and, um, they're doing a feature story on me. And then I, they also said they were going to put me on the cover of the magazine too, as well. Oh, oh. So like they said, it's almost like the Forbes magazine, sort of something like that. So oh. excited about that. Going into next year, there's a magazine called Art Tour International. Um, uh, there's like 60 artists, international artists from all over that they're honoring. So um, they asked me to be a part of that too as well. So I'll be going back to New York again. Uh, the Museum of Art in New York is going to be posting where we're going to be at. So I'm, in, I'm like, dang, that's yeah, great. That's pretty nice. So, nice. Yeah. So that's going to be in June next year. So just trying to looking forward and figuring out what is the, uh, the best space to continue to move in. When I first got in, I was like, I got to get into the, the market. You know, you get on the market and you're doing the outdoor shows and things like that. And I still do those too as well. But trying to find things in my niche is what's going to work. You know, I've been asked to come speak to some colleges um, and do some other different types of uh, aspects there too as well. So I would love to get into that as yeah, well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're a busy guy. I'm glad you, I'm glad you, when you, I'm glad you still remember the little folks like us when you get to the ladder, man. Just, just remember the little people. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's up, man. Well, you know, I want to I want to thank you, Thomas, for uh, taking time out of your busy day and the schedule to uh, to talk with uh, me and, and be on the uh, be a guest on the uh, uh, Black Art and Culture podcast. Uh, thank you very much for your feedback and your insight, and I hope that uh, someone watching would um, learn from you and your work and and continue to follow your career as you skyrocket up the uh, artistic and creative ladder. All right? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I hope I get to we, we get to collaborate and do some stuff together too. Oh well. yeah, absolutely. We definitely, yeah. definitely will. We definitely will. So this wraps up uh this episode of the uh Black Garden Culture Podcast. Oh, forgot to mention. So Thomas, where can people find you? Yes. Um my website is lockhartgallery.com. L-O-C-K-H-A-R-T Gallery dot com all one word uh you can find me on ig uh t as in tom underscore lockhart gallery uh on facebook as thomas e lockhart gallery I'm trying to brand myself brand my, yeah 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 and then uh twitter i can't even remember what the twitter yeah, is. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah but you know mainly on there and then um i tell people hey you can google me now <laughs> uh, Google me. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there, new stuff that's popping up too about uh, about me, which I'm very thankful. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Well, that's a testament to your your work, man. Your, your your work ethic to you know jump and take that leap of faith and commit to your career 100. percent So um, you know, everyone, go follow uh, Thomas Lockhart. Uh, on any social social media platform, uh, be sure to uh, check out his uh, shows if you're in the area. And um, once again, Thomas, thanks for being a part of uh, the Black Garden Culture Podcast. And um, we hope that you will continue your rise. And uh, we'll definitely be collaborating in the future. So thanks again. Appreciate it. Yes, yes. Blessed to be here. Thank you, everybody. everybody. Thanks for joining us. All right. All right. Peace. Mm -hmm.